Hi everybody, Peter here. Uh, got a video brought to you by Squarespace and I'm gonna get into a nice, big, juicy drawing. But before that, there's something important I want to do. Uh, something I need your help with. A line quiz, all right? I'm going to draw a series of lines and I need your help determining which lines are the best. It's very quick, very simple. We're going to do it uh, four times. I'm going to draw three lines, and all I have to do is choose which one you like the best, okay? Don't overthink it. Go with your gut, all right? Do it. Just choose the one you like the best. Just, ch just choose or else. All right, here's, we're gonna start simple, all right? Here's, here's the first line, okay? Can you see that? There we go. All right, here's, I'm redrawing it. Line number one, line number two, or line number three. This is uh, option, this is A, quiz A. And this is not the type of quiz you can get wrong. So don't freak out. And there's not gonna be a quiz on this quiz. So just, you can write it in the comments. Just put like A, colon, one, two, or three. Let's go on to the next one. We're gonna get a little crazier here. Now, how about this? One, two, or three. I know you might feel drawn to the fanciest one, but maybe you aren't. I don't know, maybe you are, maybe you're not. I'm not trying to tell you which one is right. In fact, I shouldn't be saying anything. Just choose for quiz number B, one, two, or three. Put it in the comments. All right, moving on. Did, did, did you get a good look? All right. I'm gonna be compiling all of these answers. This is a very important uh, research. Um, it's just, it's, it's important. C. One, two, three. One. Two or three. Choose. Choose now. Okay, and finally, the last one. Don't freak out, you can do this, I believe in you. I trust your decision making, and you should too. One, two, three. We're almost done. One, two, Three. Okay, thank you for joining me with this experiment. Please place your answers in the comments. You can put them all in one comment and hopefully in a future video, I will present the data in, I suppose a bar graph would be a good way to display this. Um, so we can see how different lines attract or appeal to people. All right, a quick sponsored segment before we get to the main drawing. Squarespace has all these amazing templates and it's completely free to go start messing around with them. Pick a cool template out of all the amazing ones they have. They look incredible just to get started. And then as you customize them, which is very easy as you drag and drop, add little modules, uh, I think you'll see that you can customize them to your heart's content 
to very well mirror what you're trying to convey to the world, maybe with your art, which is what I do with my website, or maybe something you're trying to sell, or maybe you want to make a little special members-only section that requires a password. So many things are possible through Squarespace, and you can get your own little www.whatever.com. Whatever you dream of is possible, okay? Squarespace.com for a free trial, and then when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Peter Draws for 10% off your first website or domain. Now, I have some other things to say. I'm not going to talk about this drawing too much, but I do want to say this drawing took me about 10 hours, which is more than a lot of my drawings. Usually I do them in one sitting in one day. This one I did, uh, like most drawings take me maybe like two or three or four hours in one day, and this one I did over like several days. And I used a big sheet of like 11 by 14 Bristol paper. And I, I do have to make a little amendment um, to a previous review I did of a, the Keep book by Studio Neat previously. I was complaining about how the alcohol-based markers I was using in it were seeping through the paper. And a lot of the people rightly pointed out that alcohol-based markers pretty much seep through anything and everything. There's something about, I mean, alcohol is just very pervasive, right? It just goes through. And uh, one of the reasons why I like using Bristol paper is it's just such a good surface for drawing on. Uh, like, it makes such clean, crisp lines. And at one point in this drawing, near the end, you'll notice I do use some uh, alcohol-based markers. It even seeped through this Bristol paper. So I gotta, I gotta admit, yes, I can't hold it against uh, the pages, the nice, thick, sturdy pages in that keep book for letting the, the those markers seep through those pages either, okay? Because that was one of the main gripes I had with that, that sketchbook. Anyways, um, really that's all I have to say about this drawing. I had a great time drawing it. Uh, also, I have to say that I have a, my left hand, I'm wounded right now. I'm, I'm walking wounded. I, I have a, a wrist wrap around my hand because my wrist really hurts. Poor whittle me. There might be a couple of clips in this video where you can see I have like a wrist brace on and it's one of those humiliating things where I wounded myself by sleeping. I'm 33 years old and I feel like maybe this is when you start to get to that point when you start sleeping wrong sometimes. You go to sleep feeling fine, and you get up feeling worse. So usually it's like your back or your neck because you just lay there in some weird position. This time I think I had my hand pushed up against the headboard in some awful position, but whatever it is, it's been bothering me for like four or five days, and I hope it gets better because I'm starting starting piano lessons in like a week, and I'm I'm really afraid I'm not going to get my money's worth out of these piano lessons if I'm only able to use one hand. So I really got to go easy on it. Thankfully, it's my left hand. It's not my drawing hand. I mean, as a person who uses their drawing hand for, well, things like drawing, that's like my worst fear, right? My, my drawing hand being out of commission. Of course, it's also my my eating hand, my, uh, my I don't know, my... My computer mouse hand, my phone hand, my... If I played tennis, it would probably be my tennis hand. More often than that, it's my pickleball hand, even though I haven't played pickleball recently because it's so dang cold outside. But anyways, thoughts and prayers for my left hand. But more than that, I have it wrapped with the ace bandage right now, and I put some of that... Um, you guys ever tried Tiger Balm? I had some of that, which I usually place on, like my temples and low on my neck. I usually use that for like, if I have like a really bad headache, it provides some relief. But someone, a friend at school suggested I put that on my wrist and it's actually helping. And I think I'll maybe put a hot, a heat pad on it later on. Anyways, that's all I'm going to say about my, my, my boo-boo on my wrist. Um, in other news, I've been taking apart a, an a big old digital projector. Taking things apart is a really fun thing 
and I used to do it more. It might have started when I was little. I remember for, for first and second grade, I was homeschooled. And then my mom gave up or something. Or I think my, I remember my dad saying this thing about how he was afraid that my social butterfly would die if I kept being homeschooled. So they put me in public school again, in second grade again. So I technically repeated second grade. Uh, but I think it was good because I was like technically a year older than most of the kids there. I don't know. And at that age, it's all a little bit weird. All the kids are, you know, a year older, a year younger than everyone else. And, you know, some, some, some parents either like wait a year to put their kids into school, you know, kindergarten or put them in a year earlier. It's like, when do you really do it? It all depends on when everyone's birthday is. Anyways, I think it made a big difference in my life that I was older and at that early age, one extra year of brain development counts for a lot. Anyways, tangent. But what I'm saying is I remember distinctly doing these things called owl pellets. Do you guys, any of you ever do owl pellets? Basically when owls um, eat things like a mouse, they swallow the mouse whole and then it, as far as I know, what happens is they digest the mouse in their stomach and I guess once they get all the nutrients they need out of it, they barf it right back up again and it comes out in this little nugget looking thing. And for some reason, one of the activities my mom had us do and uh, me and my sister both did this in, in homeschooling was she would give us an owl pellet and some tweezers and we would like take apart these owl pellets, which is basically a bunch of fur and bones. And it sounds kind of disgusting, but I think I loved it because you could like pick it apart and find all these tiny little mouse bones in there. And I think, I don't know if that's when it started, but I think that started my joy of taking things apart, finding what's in there. But anyways, I've been taking apart this big old digital projector I got somewhere, and I was really amazed by everything that was in there. I kind of thought it would just be kind of like a, like a LCD screen and like a bulb and like a lens, but there was like a whole big maze of multiple lenses, weird, uh, like pieces of glass. There were all these weird shimmering different colors, uh, and, and like by maze, I mean, it's like bouncing around in all these different, uh, angles and a bunch of mirrors and, all these fans, like there's probably five or six different fans in there, probably five or six different mirrors, eight, eight lenses. It was, and all these circuit boards in there. It was just amazing to take apart. It's like a, and I kept on finding more and more screws and I don't know what it was about it, but it was I'm having a great time taking it apart and just having this pile of parts. And really, I did it for this project at school where we had to find things to take molds of. But I don't think I'm going to use it for that at all. I'm just kind of having fun finding all these weird little lenses. Some of them are great at magnifying things. Sometimes when you look through them, everything on the other side is flipped upside down. Some of them just just make everyone look weird on the other side. The, the mirrors are cool. Some of the mirrors make you look purple or orange, and you can see halfway through them. Some of them make everything on the other side look like weird Instagram filters. It's just so incredibly way more over-engineered than I expected, and it's just packed so tightly in there. Uh, I thought it would be mostly empty space in there for some reason. I don't know why I would have thought that, but because if there was empty space in there, I, I think they would have probably just made it smaller. And, I mean, a lot of modern digital projectors are a lot smaller. You can get pretty small ones these days. Anyways, uh, yes, it's cool. And I have all these cool lenses and mirrors and stuff now, which, I don't know. There, I have, I have managed to light some stuff on fire with the lenses like you can do with magnifying glasses in the sun, right? And focus the sun down into one powerful little point. Yeah. Also, my phone has been toying with me lately several times. In the recent days, I've looked at my phone and it has said that it has either been snowing or that there have been flurries. 
and I walk outside, I look at the sky, and the sky has been completely empty. There have been clouds that looked pregnant with snow, but so far no snow has fallen, and I think last year we didn't even have one flake of snow. And yes, I know, I lived in Chicago for a few years, I know that it gets really annoying when it snows and snows and just won't stop snowing. I know too much snow can be a real pain, but I mean, I think I can enjoy having one good snow. Anything is good in moderation. Just a, just a nice sprinkling of snow, maybe just a few inches. In fact, what usually happens here in North Carolina is that everyone freaks out with the snow and the whole state shuts down because what usually happens is we get a few inches of snow and then the weather warms up and then we get freezing rain on top of the snow, and that really is kind of disastrous. It's a crazy combination. In fact, freezing rain just by itself is kind of crazy, but anyways. Ever since someone pointed out that I say anyways instead of anyway, I, it bugs me, but I can't stop saying it. Anyway, anyway, hope you're all having a good day, staying warm in the snow or sunshine, rain or sleet or whatever you have uh hang in there and uh yes hello and goodbye see you later all right goodbye